Hey, good afternoon. Uh, and welcome to the August 11th edition of Pacific Tango's uh, monthly webinar. Pacific Tango Group helps Asian companies succeed in North America and North American companies succeed in Asia. We engage with clients prior to entering their target market to help them plan and prepare for a successful launch. We also work with clients after arriving in their target market to help them establish their physical, legal, and business presence. Finally, we work with established subsidiaries of Asian and US companies to help them stay abreast of the local market conditions as business changes. Pacific Tango Group is a consortium of highly skilled international business professionals, each representing a functional service area such as sales, digital marketing, technology implementation, strategy, operations, human resources, and distribution, just to name a few. Clients engage with Pacific Tango Group in a variety of ways, short-term tasks or projects. These may be limited scope projects that the client doesn't have the internal resources to complete themselves or which have a limited time basis. Some examples are translation, documentation, and business process review. Midterm initiatives such as advertising campaigns, corporate and product branding, creation of accounting systems, and sales and business development are some of the activities that fall into this category. And then long-term sustained outsourcing, uh, such as uh, accounting, HR, business, and business development. For more information about Pacific Tango Group and uh, for contact information, please visit our website at pacifictangogroup.com. Um, next, uh, I'm very pleased to introduce today's speaker, uh, Hayato Nakamura. Hayato is the lead marketer and fundraiser for Lead Control Media. Hayato leads a team of consultants who teach professional service providers about LinkedIn. Many people talk about the opportunity on LinkedIn today, but most of them have not actually sold professional services. And so they aren't able to benefit fully from all LinkedIn has to offer. Hayato graduated with a master's degree in 2009 and spent the next decade selling professional services in the risk management industry. And having worked for two Fortune 500 companies in Los Angeles, Hayato is familiar with how selling professional services truly requires uh, building trust and uh, a reputation of character. Character builds trust and trust sells deals. And that's what Hayato teaches in his program. And that's what we'll get to hear about today. Um, on the personal side, uh, Hayato is an extremely interesting guy. And um, perhaps uh, this is a whole nother webinar that, to do at some point, but um, uh, Hayato lives uh, with his wife and two children in San Diego, California, where he's uh, coming to us from today. And uh, what I find really interesting is that he has lived in the jungles of Papua New Guinea and in various cities in Japan and the US. And uh, boy, like I say, that sounds like a great topic for a future webinar. So without any further ado, uh, Hayato, I'm going to hand this over to you. Um, go ahead and share your screen. Let's get started. Welcome to the training. We'll start from the top here. Uh, we titled this, The Market Shift That's Leaving Your B2B Sales Team Behind. Uh, a lot of people are on LinkedIn today, but at the same time, they're not using it. Right? It's kind of like having that driver's license and maybe you've actually sat in the driver's seat of a car, but yet you've never made it to the grocery store. And we're hoping that you do because it's important to eat. Okay. And so uh, you didn't show up just to hear my voice today, though I like it. Okay. Uh, you didn't show up just to watch somebody speak. The goal is for you. And what I ask is that you be selfish and think about your business. Uh, the more you can really continue to be critical in everything that I say, and continue to try and understand the logic what I'm trying to deliver to you, the better it's going to be for your own business, but also for the people in your network and your vendors and all the people that you continue to need to add value to. Okay. You might be amazing looking. Okay. But in business, it's all about what works for them. Okay. And so uh, everything that you have going for you on top of that, let's add the, uh, the knowledge that we can give you in this presentation today. Now let's move on here. Objectives today, 
what we're talking about here uh, really works best specifically for the MSPs and B2B professional service providers. If MSPs isn't uh, an acronym that you know of, doesn't apply to you, and so don't worry about it. Uh, but most of us here are in the B2B professional service space. Now, you might say, you know what? We're actually in the business of selling products, CPG goods. Maybe so. But in order to then score distributors, you might realize that you still are in a B2B professional service space to a degree in order to then make B2B professional connections with the people who are gonna go and possibly sell or carry your product. So most businesses, most businesses still have a B2B component and this is still gonna come in handy for you today, okay? And once again, as mentioned in the title, I want you to understand the market shift that's leaving 99% of B2B sales teams behind. Uh, and it sounds like a little bit of an exaggeration per se, uh, but just follow with me because uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. And then we'll move into lastly, some LinkedIn specific action steps uh, so that you can get a feel for what it feels like to go forward from here. The tale of two futures, okay? And by the way, uh, I know we have the rest of the hour here. My goal is to maybe talk for about 30, 40 minutes and then do some Q&A. And maybe if somebody wants to raise their hand, we can go directly to you and uh, you know look at your uh, LinkedIn presence and all that kind of thing together, right? Because some people aren't even on LinkedIn. Some people are very savvy on it. You just never know who's attending. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna keep this more, uh, I don't wanna say high level as if to demean that, but uh, we're gonna cover the basics together today. Okay, so the more detail we can have in the Q&A, the better. So I want to leave time for that. So let's keep moving on here. The tale of two futures, okay? Most people, if they're not part of a training like this or they're not taking LinkedIn seriously, we suspect will end up following that right arrow on the right, right? And they're going to say they stayed on course with what they knew how to do and they got left behind with the times. We surely don't want that for you, right? Our invitation is to follow us into the green arrow on the left where you can look back and say we stayed on course with the market right? Not necessarily that you listen to us or anybody else, right? It's that you followed the market. You stayed on course with the market to take the right actions that merit the right results. And you could say that we're biased, but from what we see in the B2B professional services world, and even that of the MSPs, the course of the market is moving towards becoming heavily, heavily uh, B2B and LinkedIn focused, right? These are just some of the companies, a variety of employees from any mix of these that we've supported along the way. And these are all service providers specifically in the uh, um, professional financial space, um, but there are many others that come with this as well, okay? Now, who we work with tends to be CC executives or maybe marketing and sales departments, but also coaches and consultants and owners, right? Because you're still the brand that needs to reach people in a B2B fashion on LinkedIn. So we work with them as well. Lastly, corporate training and professional development departments. They are obviously continuing to uh, look for ways to reskill, retool uh, their uh, teams as they go forward. And so got you here on the training with us, okay? So the way that I'd like to approach this is asking a few questions so that you can see how you fit into the big picture here, okay? Um, whether LinkedIn is really right for you or not. And a couple of questions might start with, is your sales team struggling to keep its pipeline full, right? And you might say, I have enough to do right now. Well, in that instance, then maybe this isn't for you, but I hope you'll stay on, right? Is your sales team struggling to keep its pipeline full? And if you're a B2B sales provider or an MSP, then, you know, what we're going to share today will apply to you? Or does your sales team need a boost in pipeline activity? Because through the pandemic, uh, through this virus, through the turn of events that's happened through 2020 and beyond, maybe you've realized that what you've always been doing is not the hottest thing that's going to keep you moving forward. So are you still doing any of these things? It's always a question that we start with, right? Cold emails, cold calling, maybe door-to-door -door visiting. We still get those at our door. Uh, mailers, radio, seminars. Uh, maybe you're waiting for the next trade show or the convention to open back up because they got shut down uh, during the pandemic. Maybe you're looking for the next breakfast to host, or maybe you're buying lead lists or paid ads. Uh, I'm not here to say that LinkedIn is going to replace all of these, and though it could. We're not here to say you should stop all of these things, but what we're here to say is if you follow the market shift in the direction that we think it's going and we see it's going, uh, these things will maybe merit some results, but you're going to get left behind by everyone else who's going to follow the shift. And so the question is, and how are they working out for you, right? And these are usually the things that your team would say, or possibly you've been saying to yourself, if you are the main brand and uh, sales person of your business. Uh, and these are the things that you would hear, right? Ah, the reach is limited, right? We're not reaching as many people, or maybe the traffic with leads are a little bit cold. They're not coming in as warm as they used to, 
or the trust with prospects feels lower than what it used to be. Okay, they're not as eager to do business with us when we get on the call, or maybe the team feels jaded and the morale is low. This is actually a very common thing, especially after the pandemic. And then lastly, the entire prospecting process feels out of control. We used to be able to call 100 people and get five deals or whatever the metrics used to be. It's a little bit scattered now. People aren't in the office anymore. People aren't picking up their phones anymore. People aren't opening their emails as much anymore or so on and so forth. The entire process feels a little bit out of control. And so here's a story about the market shift, okay? Shifts are inevitable. Uh, you know, I think most of us are old enough to remember the days when any of these things were still alive and well, and they are to a degree, right? To the point about how it's not that we're here to replace everything, but nonetheless, the shifts are continuing to happen. Once upon a time, if you were lucky enough to score a radio position, some guy with an amazing voice would read your uh, uh, advertising and then people would know about you. Great. And they would just, you know, inbound leads. You pick up the phone and someone's ready to give you money. But no longer are those days because the TV showed up. And then you're going to find, you know, according to your budget or your connections, the best looking person who's going to act out your message on a TV commercial. And from there, as long as you're on prime time, then people are like, hey, let me pick up that number. Let me call you. No longer does that really apply anymore, right? And then the phone and email age showed up, and that was a big shift as well, right? You could pay big bucks for a TV commercial, or you can just get a very cheap phone line, hire a bunch of guys who would just cold call and get right into the desk of that B2B buyer that you needed to reach. Same with email, right? But no longer do people want to be bothered on the phone. No longer are people opening emails as much. I know this is all redundant information, okay? But I just want to kind of show you that shifts are inevitable. And what we're talking about here isn't just about how to use LinkedIn or what the tactics are around LinkedIn, though we'll touch on some of those. The big story really is that the shift is bigger, okay? Everything that we mentioned so far, calls, emails, conventions, networking events, all that kind of stuff, if we categorize that as a traditional method, everything going forward is going to be a digital first method, okay? And the digital first method tends to be taken over by social media channels. Because sure, maybe websites have been around since the early 2000s, and maybe email is digital to an extent. But nonetheless, social media channels are really what is changing the landscape, where you can find somebody, you can meet them, you can let them know about who you are, and then actually engage in conversation all from one single platform. And in this case, what we're talking about today is LinkedIn. And yes, it's important even for B2B sales. Okay, because social media channels, I know, right, maybe you're on Instagram or Facebook in your usual day of life. And uh, of course, there are some CPG brands that would swear by Instagram and Facebook, because that's where you reach your clientele. I get that. But for us to be to be reaching another professional, meeting them, finding them, starting a conversation with them, LinkedIn is going to be the place. And it's definitely important, even for B2B sales. Okay. And so LinkedIn is a platform. LinkedIn is a platform. But again, you all know the name, so I don't need to explain what that's about. So the next thing that people usually do is to just gush out a bunch of numbers as if that's supposed to mean something to you, right? But again, remember, I said, I want you to be selfish about your current situation and think about where you are in your own business. So this is the way that I'm going to approach all of that, okay? We're going to talk about them in the form of common misunderstandings about LinkedIn. So that in hopes that at least by the end of this little section inside of the presentation or the training, you would have a better understanding as to why it actually matters, okay? You might say, LinkedIn is for recruiters, job seekers, and spammers, not for sales, right? Which is what a lot of people think, okay? Uh, it's still, some people are a little bit hesitant to update their profile because then they don't want, say, their management or their boss uh, uh, to think that they're looking for another job. This is a very real thing, right? But we want you to understand that it's actually something greater than that, okay? 93% of B2B marketers consider LinkedIn to be the most effective site for lead generation. Now, some of you in your businesses, you actually pay some of these B2B marketers to do lead gen for you. And chances are, they're actually on LinkedIn on your behalf trying to solicit leads and that's how you actually book those calls. They of course didn't tell you about it because they want to own that relationship and just give you that contact info. But nonetheless, most likely on the back end, they are doing that for you, okay? We run a serious business and have a website, you might say. LinkedIn won't help with that, right? And some of you have truly done a good job, SEO, having a clean website presence, all of that, that makes you look quote unquote professional. But what we find here is that LinkedIn is responsible for 64% of all visits from social media channels to corporate websites. And we'll show you a case study later on where truly implementing the basics of what we talk about, the company got an increase in website traffic. Why not, right? Why not? 
And we sell B2B to decision makers, you might say. Social media and LinkedIn is only for B2C, right? Because again, back to that example about CPG goods and such, a lot of people think LinkedIn is just another kind of Facebook for business kind of thing. It, it doesn't have the kind of respect that it should. And what we find is that 80% of LinkedIn members want to connect with companies to enhance their decision making. Okay, 80% of LinkedIn members want to connect with companies to enhance their decision making. That actually means that if you're not on LinkedIn, maybe you're not even in the running for the decision making to consider you as a JV partner, a seller of whatever service that you're trying to deliver, so on and so forth, right? And this is also interesting. 50% of LinkedIn members report they're more likely to buy from a company they engage with on LinkedIn. Now, of course, you could say the stat is biased because that was produced by LinkedIn. I know we can always go there. But again, what reason do people have to lie about that, right? 50% of LinkedIn members report they're more likely to buy from a company they engage with on LinkedIn, okay? And so you might say 50% that of LinkedIn, 80% of that of LinkedIn. How many people are actually on LinkedIn? What's the opportunity there? These are the numbers. There are more than 850 million users, and there are more than 55 million companies. Is there a B2B prospect or distribution partner or JV partner or the appropriate center of influence that you need to approach in order to increase revenue for your business on LinkedIn? Absolutely, right? Absolutely. And LinkedIn generates more leads for B2B companies than Facebook, Twitter, or blogging individually, okay? And so if you're in the B2B space, which I assume you are, this is definitely the place to be. Now, lastly, you might say this, we track metrics. That's what serious businesses do. LinkedIn doesn't have that, right? Because a lot of people go on Instagram and Facebook and thinks it's just a big waste of time. Maybe LinkedIn is also just a big waste of time. But let's get into something that's pretty interesting here, okay? Social selling index is a number. And I'll show you more about that in the following slides in a second. But follow with me here. This produces a real metric based on your ability to leverage and maximize on the LinkedIn platform, okay? And it's an amazing way to monitor and improve upon your team's activity and performance, right? And so LinkedIn, obviously being a B2B platform said, we understand that everyone's got metrics. If you can't measure things, you can't improve them. So what can we do to implement, or you know, should I say gamify in a way, people to actually get engaged. Now their selfish ambition is for people to look at these metrics and want to improve their metrics. So they spend more time on LinkedIn. But for you and I, it's a great way for us to see quantitatively what LinkedIn and other platforms are actually thinking about us. Well, specifically LinkedIn for today's case, what, they, what it thinks about us so that we can continue to leverage the max of what's available. So I'm gonna show you a screenshot here. And yes, there are a bunch of numbers on here, this and that, um, but let me just go through these one by one and explain them so that you get a glimpse as to what kind of metrics are actually available. Okay, and now everything that I'm showing you here is free for you to access. All you have to do is Google social selling index and go ahead and click on the first search that comes up. It's going to be LinkedIn site. You click on that thing and it will automatically take you in uh, uh, to your LinkedIn profile. If you're not logged in, then it'll ask you to log in and it'll produce and spit out this number for you. Do that today. Okay, first action item. Do that today. And let's just go through some of these numbers. Okay. Industry SSI rank. SSI stands for Social Selling Index. Okay, top SSI rank, meaning myself, Hayato Nakamura, and this is actually my score as of you know a few days ago here. If I were to then ask LinkedIn, hey, where does my LinkedIn activity rank within my my world of things, right? And so we are a professional training and coaching business, right? We teach people how to do this stuff while doing it ourselves. In our industry, where do we rank, right? And LinkedIn tells us we're top one percent. We'll get into a little bit of that a little more in, in a second here. What about from the network SSI rank? Okay, network meaning, well, maybe my peers, my competition were connected, or our prospects were connected, or our clients or past clients were connected. Grouping all those people together, where do we rank in relation to them, to the capacity that we are leverage, leveraging LinkedIn to its fullest capacity? LinkedIn thinks we're in the top 1%. We might as well be, right? We do this for a living, so I sure hope that we would be. Now, the current social selling index for me at this time is an 82 out of 100. Now, between, before you start getting into, well, is 82 a good number of that? We'll get into that in a second. But on the right side, I want to show you what kind of metrics LinkedIn is actually trying to score us on. Okay, You'll see four bars there, starting with the orange at the top. So this top, 
is uh, uh, one that's called establish a professional brand. LinkedIn, from the way that you're positioned on the platform, the way you're interacting with people, the kind of conversation that you're having, uh, they own the platform. So they see everything that who you're trying to be and who you're perceived to be. And so then they start giving you numbers in the sense of us developing a professional brand, meaning people will easily find us and acknowledge us for who we want to be known as. The score is 21. Now, I'm sure it's much, much more detailed than that behind the scenes, but without spilling the entirety of the algorithm in the soup, this is the number that they give us, 21 out of 25, okay? And then the next one, are you finding the right people? According to who you're trying to reach, who you say you're trying to reach, how are you reaching them, right? We're a 20 out of 25. In relation to the next one, engaging with insights. How well are you contributing to the themes and topics around your services and your kind of professional stature that you are inside of LinkedIn? We're 15.73 out of 25. So we obviously have work to do there. Then lastly, how are you at building relationships? How, how, how good are you at actually getting into conversations and actually leading people down your pipeline to make sales with them? And we're 25 out of 25 on that, okay? If there's anything to gun for, you want to shoot for that last bar being the full 25 out of 25. You add all that together, and LinkedIn is very generous to round up to the nearest decimal point, and it's 82 out of 100 for us. Now, back to that question about whether 82 is a good number or not, follow with me. People in our industry tend to average at 26 out of 100. So is our 82 or bad? Well, that's beyond good, beyond good. And I sure hope so because we do this for a living. Now, next, people in your network. 82 over 48. Are we doing better than our network or worse than our network? Obviously better. And we sure hope that we would, right? People in your network have an average SSI of 48%. You rank in the top 1%. This kind of number, you'll get in an instant if you put it in Google today and actually go ahead and access that. So I really, really encourage you to find where you are. Because again, like famous Peter Drucker, and if you don't know who he is, look him up. Uh, management consulting, every B school studies him, okay? He says, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it, okay? If you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So find out where you're starting today, all right? Now, here's the opportunity on LinkedIn, okay? Here's the opportunity on LinkedIn. Many of you have seen this kind of period, pyramid if you've, say, taken any kind of marketing class or a sales training course, things of that kind, okay? This is basically the customer journey starting with at the bottom, someone being unaware that they even have a problem that you can solve, and then leading all the way up to actually doing a deal. Let me read these off level by level, just so you get a picture, okay? So somebody is unaware at the very bottom. They don't know that they need accounting services, okay? And then maybe they go one step forward. Something happens and they become aware of the problem. Oh, I actually need an accountant or some kind of accounting service to look over my stuff, because now I realize that my numbers are in shambles and I couldn't say, pay all my taxes or whatever the situation was. And then from there, they start to look for solutions. So they move up a rank. They become aware of solutions. Oh, I see. I don't have to hire a full-time accountant. I can actually go look for fractional accounting services, pay kind of a part-time accounting fee, bookkeeper and such. And these are the solutions that are out there. Great. And then from there, as long as you're marketing to them or reaching them or building trust with them, you go one step higher. And they get to that point of saying, oh, I see you're a solution that I could have. They become aware of your specific solution. And if that actually pans out, if they evaluate that and it looks good to them, they, they move up to the top of the pyramid, which is to actually do a deal with you, to actually pay you money to become a client of yours. Every customer or client that you have is going through this whole trajectory from bottom to top, okay? Now, most traditional prospecting really only deals with the people who are ready to go into the deal at the very top. Okay. And unfortunately, it's really only two to 3% of the audience, right? Imagine the sales team that's really, really good at picking up the phone. Hey, you know, this is something that we're offering. Is this something that you're looking for right now? And I know that's effective if you do it in volume, but you're not going to get everybody else under the orange here, right? You're only going to attack what you see in the orange here. You send them the emails. Hey, we got this great promotion going on. You know, can we actually get into a phone call? Would you be interested? Again, you're only approaching the people at the top of the pyramid here. So the question really is, what are you doing with the rest? You're just leaving it for your competition, right? And sure, you might say, well, my competition is doing the same thing. You're right, they might be, but your competition is also in places that you can't be. 
like say maybe they're happy to mask up and go to the grocery store stand in line and meet a random person or maybe there's a virtual coffee that you're not invited to or maybe they're you know whatever it is that they're doing that you cannot reach okay they are out there they're ready to eat your lunch any day before you ever found out that it could have been yours okay 97 to 98 percent of the audience is left for the competition and is that a good idea no not really no not really right and this is the opportunity here on linkedin you can actually attack people at every step of this pyramid here, right? You can actually be in their eyes before they're even unaware of needing the problem. I mean, needing a solution for the problem that you can solve, right? Or maybe if you already start a relationship at the bottom, then by the time they become problem aware, you're already in their proximity, but they may not know that you are the good or the best solution that they have. And then they start looking for solutions. Well, you, you're already in a relationship with them on LinkedIn. And it can be anything as intimate as having a direct chat to something as a little bit conservative, like just simply being connected and they see the posts that you, you produce, right? You can approach them really, really early in the relationship by being on LinkedIn. Let's move it in uh, uh, to the last step in the blue, right? When they become uh, uh, aware of your solution, they're probably also aware of someone else's solution as well. You're probably not the only vendor in the running. In that instance, who wins the game? The person who's been building trust with them for more levels, be voters, right? And it's always the case, right? Because they want to actually do business with the people that they know, like, and trust. And what you can do on LinkedIn is at any given level, continue your exposure so that they can know, like, and trust you, okay? So here's a simple case study, okay, about a multinational engineering company. Now, I understand that, you know, those of you attending uh, uh, with us live today or possibly watching a recording, you may not be a multinational engineering company, but what I want to show you is a company that has all the bits and pieces, all the budget that you can imagine to be doing marketing was still falling behind on this market shift. And so then they had to say, how can we actually implement LinkedIn in a serious way? What are the strategies involved? What needs to happen here? And can that actually produce results? Okay. And so I'm going to show you three slides here. This one here is going to call, be called before, as you'll see in the top uh, uh, heading there. And then we'll move on to the action plan that was implemented. And then I'll tell you about the results that they merited. Okay. Simple enough. So the top bullet there, the company was reaching its audience through traditional in-person sales calls, scheduling demos, attending trade shows, so on and so forth. Okay. All the stuff that you may still be doing. And we're not, again, here to say that we're not here to say stop doing it. But we're just saying if you layer LinkedIn on top of that, it can go much, much better for you. Next one, no digital nurturing relationship or direct access. Okay. And so they really weren't developing relationship. They were really just out there kind of spam marketing, for lack of a better way to say it. Some companies operate like that and they've done well. Okay. But the tides are shifting. Thirdly, the company's social media efforts declining due to poor reach and algorithms. I don't want to get into too much technical detail here, but those of you who know how social media works are familiar with how there's this term called organic reach. When a platform is new or if it's being kind to you, all you have to do is post something and suddenly for free, it will blast your message to the world. But as more people come on or as the ages go by, they don't necessarily blast at the whole world anymore. Maybe blast at just a few people. And their business model is to come to you and say, hey, by the way, do you want to blast it to the world? I say, yeah. And they say, how about you pay some money? Okay. I hate to say it this way, but it's kind of like that cocaine dealer that might give you the first hit for free. And you're like, oh, that's amazing. Okay, I'm not here advocating for drugs, but I think it's a good example that everybody understands. And you take the first few and then you're addicted. And then now you have to keep coming back and then you have to pay. That's basically how social media works. If you work for any of these companies, I apologize. I'm not trying to demean any other character among management, but it's just the business model, okay? So social media is not firing as hard for you forever. LinkedIn, fortunately, is still a place that it does, okay? And so basically in the before, let's wrap this uh, uh, slide up. They left a lot of opportunity on the table, similar to that pyramid situation that I showed you a second ago. So moving into the actions, this is what it looked like. Now I know this is you know just text on a sheet, um, but hear me out, okay? We had to train the team 
on using LinkedIn. That was the first thing because they all had their resume on there in case they had to go get another job or something, right? They had they they all had an account, but we had to train them on how to use it, right? And we had to highlight the power of the LinkedIn network and highlight the power of the personal branding and the prospecting capabilities on LinkedIn. Okay. And then you showcase the potential and power, getting the team motivated and active, which is an important part of what we train and teach our clients as well. And then you want to revamp their profiles in real time. Okay. Not just to kind of leave it and hopefully somebody will next uh, uh, do it next week. No, let, let's do it. Let's do it fast and let's get it quickly. Overcoming their biggest hurdles. Because when you lack clarity, and you'll know this as a business owner, if you are one, or if you're even in any capacity in sales or marketing, when you lack clarity, really, really delay your time to market, right? And so then by doing things real time with you, by doing things quickly, you gain clarity and then you overcome those hurdles that are really holding you back. And lastly, you want to position the team as authorities and experts and thought leaders in the market, okay? Because remember in that pyramid, the lower sections before someone's ready to do a deal, if you're not an authority, if you're not an expert, if you're not a thought leader, why should they listen to you? And you have a lot of interest, a lot of info that you could be sharing and you're not. So here are what the results look like. And again, remember, this is for a multinational engineering corp that had all the money in the world okay, to be advertising, but yet still they ended up having to come and seek guidance on LinkedIn, how to implement it. And by the way, operating on LinkedIn is basically free, right? It's a funny thing. A company can have all the money in the world. And at the end of the day, they have to resort to a free platform, which is hilarious to me, but it's the reality of where the market shift is going. Okay. Sooner or later, if LinkedIn starts charging because it just works so well for everybody, I wouldn't be surprised. I really, really wouldn't be surprised. So top bullet, several employees received media opportunities from their new visibility and networking opportunities. Well, that's kind of nice, right? We all know that media opportunities, though it sounds traditional, that really goes for your accolades and your reputation, right? Oh, you're on Forbes or you're on this engineering corporation or you're on this real estate magazine, right? It goes a long ways for your branding and credibility. And the website traffic increased 10 times as a result of the employee's efforts. It really didn't take too much, right? Now the company recognized, was recognized, should I say, as one of the top 10 companies with most active employees on social media in their industry, okay? And the team started to receive inbound inquiries from their thought leadership content and sharing their expertise. This happens to us all the time, right? Where you post a few things and suddenly people start to show up. Hey, what is it that you guys do? I saw you, I saw you in this post. Hey, that was really helpful. I hope we can connect. Now, do we turn that into a sale conversation? Yeah, absolutely, right? Because if you believe in what you offer, you might as well take up that cue that they think you're valuable, you can help them. And of course, if you don't end up doing a deal, that's fine, right? But you might as well. We in business are always looking for revenue and there's no shame in that. And so when the inbound inquiry comes, that's basically someone voting their, casting their vote, should I say, that you are worth the conversation. And then they landed several large new leads and opportunities while building relationships with key decision makers. They used to call, they used to email, they used to go to trade shows and host speeches at conventions, but none of that was working out anymore. But then now the new decision makers on LinkedIn and they connect, they can know, like, and trust. They get into a conversation and then they get on the call and now it's an opportunity in the pipeline. And lastly, the team became highly motivated and uses the tool as a new digital sales tool. Once you have a little bit of progress, whether it be a sales team that you manage or you yourself, if you're the brand and the salesperson for your business, getting some quick wins in this regard, getting visibility, having conversations moving forward really helps for your motivation, right? Really helps for your motivation. So these results were achieved in two months. And I have to mention that because some of you might say, yeah, maybe it's a year in the trenches. You know what? For some, some businesses, it absolutely is. I'm not going to lie to you about that. But these results in two months were achieved and they were only 20% through their customized game plan put in place. The basics are simple for you to start implementing, you know, but we obviously offer a level of consulting as well, where we would go customized and deeper into certain corporations and certain businesses to really kind of lay out a really detailed game plan. In this case, there are only 20% through. And these are the results after two months. Okay. Again, on a big company that had lots of budget. And at the end of the day, they have to resort to a free platform like LinkedIn. It's the power that's out there, okay? Now, here are the three pillars of LinkedIn that we always help people through, okay? 
And it doesn't have to be any more complicated than this. We start with positioning, then I'll go into that in a second. And then you move on to inviting people into relationship. And then lastly, you wanna be able to lead them so that they can then see that you're an expert, a thought leader, and actually incur more inbound leads, okay? Positioning that leads into inviting and then leads into leading. And the better you lead people, that reemphasizes your position. And that then incurs more invitations. And the better you invite people, well, the more you invite people, right? Because you're better positioned, now you're able to lead more people and the cycle just keeps going and going and going, okay? So let's start with number one here, right? Your team members' profiles and all that prospects can see and find about them must accurately relay how they can help the prospects. It, this is not a complicated thing, right? If you were to show up at a networking event, people need to know quickly what you're about. You know those people that go to networking events and all they do is banter and chatter, right? And you know, you're 15 minutes in the conversation and you're still not sure what this guy's about. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, what, what did I waste my time here or possibly your money for if you paid to attend there? In a similar way, you're competing with a lot of people on LinkedIn. And the more clear your value is to them, the easier it's gonna become for them to just simply know what you're about so they can engage in conversation, okay? And so just to give you some simple examples here from some real live uh, um, uh, LinkedIn profiles, okay? You know, some of you may have met this guy. I think I've made an intro for him here and there. But in this case, he could be anybody, right? It's not necessarily a fancy banner or anything. But at the very least, could we start on the headline, right? And say European and solar thermal companies, US market entry consultant, right? Fluent in German and English, thermal and solar, US local industry expertise for 15 years. Now, this may not mean anything to you, but in consultation with him, this is exactly what his European counterparts need to know for them to know what he's about, who he is, and what he can do for them, right? Very, very simple, simple philosophy here. What about him, right? We come in here. LinkedIn marketing strategist, increasing visibility online, mentor and coach, test a lot of things with this profile, <laughs> aspiring ice cream influencer, follow me on Clubhouse, okay? And it's very clear. And there's a little bit of kind of play in there as well. You get, you get a feel for maybe what kind of person he is, right? This whole aspiring ice cream influencer, right? There's so many little nuances that we can pick up from just a simple two-line headline. Now, of course, position gets much more deeper than that, but I'm just giving you just a few examples here. Now, what about this guy here? Ask me how I can help you build your own independent insurance agency, take control of your future. That's all he's about. He doesn't need anything more complicated than that. And when he approaches people on LinkedIn, well, the people who would resonate that to that are the only people who reaches out to. Positioning is very clear. Very, very, very clear. All right. All right. I'm trying to change the tab here. Give me a second here. The uh, Zoom tabs are very much in my way. All right. Here we go. Okay. Now, we'll come back to this guy in a second. So that's positioning, okay? If you don't have that down, no one's going to respond to you, okay? You might say, oh, I'm on LinkedIn, no one's responding. It's probably because your positioning's off, right? And we can help you with that. Now, number two, the pillar, okay? Pillar two is inviting. Your team must have a daily playbook to follow in order to maximize on the platform and avoid becoming a spammer. Many of you actually get spam on a daily basis. Hi, Kevin, I don't care who you are, but I hope that you'll buy my stuff, right? Hi, Joe, I don't care who you are, but I'm hoping that you're looking for a different job, right? Not even realizing that you own your own business <laughs> and you're never looking for a job, right? You know, we all get this, we all get this. There is a way to actually have a good playbook in place so that you're not spamming, but you're reaching people respectfully and professionally and really engaging the levers that LinkedIn gives you to build rapport than say building spam. Okay. And what's possible here, and this is just a screenshot from one of the softwares that we use. Obviously, you don't need to use any, but it was the easiest thing to show you here. So I'm going to show it to you. Everything that happens inside of LinkedIn can essentially be brought into a system like this, where you can very clearly see who's responding and who's actually interested in what you're out to do. And so every single person on here on this list, you know, if you're a school, just keeps going uh, uh, lower and lower, is where you can see that, okay, these are the people who are not interested. I'm not gonna waste my time on them. These are the people who weren't interested, but request information. Here are the people who are interested and so on and so forth. And they can show up in a clear pipeline. And this is all within LinkedIn. 
There were not additional emails that were sent. There were not calls that were given, right? This is all within LinkedIn. And with a good playbook, you can absolutely have appointment uh, um, booked appointments on the far right here uh, and uh, actually do business here, okay? So this is not some kind of little thing that we're trying to show you that has to fit into a big picture. LinkedIn alone can drive a lot of business for you. Lastly, pillar three is to lead. Your team must lead its audience with visibility and thought leadership because the more people who see and know them, the more sales they will close. Very simple concept here, right? If they see you, they're going to listen, okay? And because they're listening, they'll finally give you the attention that you so deserve. Now, I'm going to show you one guy here, okay? He's somebody who does a good job on content, right? And he has a short video here that took him no time to build, and he's basically just talking into the camera. It's not complicated, okay? And even the uh, uh, text on here, you don't need that. Of course, if you did, that's helpful, but you don't need that. And then from here, let's look at what kind of metrics he has. Now, I can't see how many views he's had, but more importantly, what we can see is 19 reactions, right? It might be like a thumbs up or a clap or whatever it is. And then we got 20 comments, okay? There are a lot of people who probably saw this who didn't respond, but that's fine because maybe they'll respond on the next one. At the very least, the people who responded to this, there are 20 comments, okay? And this isn't the world of, say, Instagram where you're showcasing a piece of lipstick and someone's like, hey, that's beautiful and have no buying intention right? People who actually engage with you on LinkedIn are already in their business mindset. And so if they're engaging with you, they either want you to see them or just giving you a chance to see them, right? And you can probably lead every single one of these into a sale conversation, okay? And so even something as simply, simple comment here, people need to understand that you can totally be social, blah, 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 blah. And she gives a little comment, right? And they go into a series of responses on the actual engagement. Okay. That's a great way to explain it and see because he's leading his audience. Okay. Leading not in a manipulative way, but really leading as an authority for the space that he wants to be known by. Hey, he's not here to say like, Hey, Lorena, thanks for commenting. Would you like to buy my stuff? Right. That's not, that's not the tone. Right. Hey, thank you for commenting. Appreciate you engaging. Right. Gave a little banter. And on the back end, I'm sure of it that there was a direct message that uh, uh, was generated from here, and then they would go on to talk about business, okay? And so these are the kind of things that really become key in ensuring that your LinkedIn opportunity is maximized, all right? So once again, starting with the positioning. If you're not getting responses on all the invitations that you're sending, you're probably off on your positioning, okay? Now, if you're inviting people, but they're not responding, most likely your positioning is, all, is off again and they're not responding, but also maybe you're not pulling the right levers that you need. And then of course, if you're inviting a bunch of people, but no one's kind of engaging you in conversation, you're probably not leading them well, okay? You're not giving them value, okay? So how to start working on it, right? Of course, you can go and do this all on your own. That is fine too, right? But with the permission of the host, I'll tell you what we do, okay? And so option one looks like this, right? Team development workshops. And we're going to wrap up here in just a few minutes here. Uh, option one is team development workshops. Teams invite us in and they would say, hey, would you do a live custom workshop for us? Okay. We're not looking for a long time engagement. I don't need you to work with us for six months. We're just getting on to speed, getting up to speed on how this actually works. Can you do a custom workshop? We say yes. Okay. It's a highly interactive half day workshop designed and proven to help you gain clarity, right? Because sales with clarity produces full pipelines. Simple as that. What you get at the end of the workshop by working with us is ensuring that you get a prospecting playbook because you don't want to listen to somebody, right? We all went to college, probably. If not, that's fine. You went to high school class and uh, you listened to some person and it just didn't help you at all, right? You want to come out with a playbook so you can actually implement. And one of the things that you can gain through that is that you can get a motivated team to actually keep moving forward, okay? Now, how do you do that? How do you get in with that? Just contact us. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Now, here's option two, which many maybe smaller businesses or possibly if you're working on your own might take use of, okay? It's the one-on-one -on -one or group coaching environment. Basically, the uh, curriculum is the same, and so I grouped those together. And one-on-one -on -one or group coaching looks like never having to worry about whether you're implementing it correctly. Because yes, there are things that you can learn by watching a ton of YouTube videos, maybe. But are you doing everything that you should or possibly are you doing too much? Right. And these are the types of things that we can walk you through every step of the way, um, week after week, right, for a period of time together. And then 
You can get step-by-step -step tutorials where you have a 24 seven access for as long as you need, because, Hey, do you need to wait for the next coaching call in order to make progress? No, some of you have time this week, right? Maybe your kids just went back into school and you got all the time in the world in that instance. Hey, just get onto the archives, just take the videos and just, you know, keep moving forward. Really, really, really that simple. And then you want to have every question answered. Okay. Uh, we don't want you to have to wait for the next call. Right. And some of you might say, well, you know, what are the, uh, um, what's the curriculum actually look like? Okay. And I'm just going to show you what it actually looks like. And our goal is not for you to just be left to your vices and just go through video after video and not wonder, you know, not being sure what to do. It's more so short videos implement short videos implement got a question send an email or get on the coaching call we hash it out go back to the videos implement back to videos implement okay and so it's all about just moving forward now there's a whole here and as you can see as we just covered we have pillar one which is positioning pillar two inviting pillar through uh three which is lead you can go through the whole thing and these are just a series of videos that you can watch three to five minutes each and just crush this at whatever time you got because most likely you are not a bored summer intern in high school or college you have a business to run during the day so come to these in the evening right little by little chip away and we have worksheets in there we have videos in here that explain exactly on screen shares and everything what you're supposed to be doing to get up to speed on positioning learning how to invite people and learning how to lead people simple as that so that is what we have for you okay now this will be the last thing and we'll wrap this up here one of the hardest things about wondering whether you should go forward in learning more about LinkedIn or even getting guidance from people like us or anybody else for that matter, is that question of, well, can I just taste and see? Because I don't know if you're going to be good for me, you might say, right? And I always have this kind of hesitancy if I'm finding a new vendor or coach or you know some kind of partner. And so we just make it easy, right? And say for the first week, we make it a dollar. Okay. We'll make it a dollar. And Kevin's going to, you know, send out that uh, um, uh, link later. And, or you can drop it in the chat if you wish. But basically, for the first week, you just pay a dollar and just cruise the video content, get in touch with us. We'll do an onboarding call and you'll get to see what this is about. If you're interested, come for it. And then from there, right, we'll go on with a further relationship. But Never do we want it to be a situation where you're like, oh, I'm not sure I have to think about it, this and that. Hey, just taste and see whether it's good for you. Very simple story. Okay. Very simple story. So I'll leave you with that for as long as it lasts. Okay. And um, I hope you'll contact us about that or at least just go in on it. All right. So, hey, let's wrap this up. The platform isn't going away. All right. And we want you to gain a competitive advantage using LinkedIn. And still, we believe you would be getting in early, okay? And LinkedIn truly is the digital tool of the future, and there's no other competing platform. See, you might be on Facebook saying, I don't know, maybe Instagram is going to be more, uh, maybe TikTok. In the B2B realm, there is no other platform that is as good or large or effective as LinkedIn. And so I really, really, really encourage you, whether it be with us or anybody else, really encourage you to expedite the learning, partner with somebody, and just get moving on it. Okay, just get moving on it. And lastly, keep getting uh, um, uh, the platform keeps getting important to help companies grow. It just continues to, you know, in, in the years that we've been working in the space, it just continues to have more and more and more of a critical positioning for businesses going forward. And so it's probably not going to back off anytime soon. Okay. So, hey, connect with us to stay on pace with the market shift before it's too late. I'll wrap it up here. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And Let's get some questions um, if anyone's got some. So thank you, guys. Kevin, I think you're on uh, mute there. I am. Thank you. So if anyone has questions, uh, please put them in the chat or uh, just raise your hand. And that, that works, too. Um, ah, OK, Fred. All right. Uh, hi, Ato. This is amazing. I mean, you're always a very enthusiastic speaker. It's very impressive. Um, one quick question. Um, we're in the business where, you know, we're really not trying to, you know, find 100 people and then narrow it down to 50, 20, 10, and 1, right? We really, we already know who we need to go ping, right? So it is a little 
happen in a way where we are really looking for more than 80 percent you know um the win rate in a way because we exactly know who we need to talk to right um what uh, you know, I, I found LinkedIn very, very useful in that because we can learn about them before we knock on their door. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I, I think even with that, I think LinkedIn has a lot of resources that the average LinkedIn users do not know how to leverage, right? So can you maybe say something about that? Sure, sure. So if you already know exactly who you need to ping, this is not a mass market situation. You have one person, Joe Schmo, this title, this location, this office, you know exactly where that person is. Exactly. You reach out to them, they don't respond. All right, this is usually the situation. If they respond right away, then we wouldn't have this conversation, obviously. Exactly. So if we speak to them, they don't respond, then like anything, take that, that very kind of a uh, um, uh, crude example of a high school boy wanting to reach that high school girl, but the high school girl is not giving him any attention right now. Now, we don't know if the high school girl did not see the boy or if the high school girl is rejecting the boy. We don't know, right? And so then in that instance, what does the high school boy do? He usually has to go and find the friends of all that of that girl, right? Maybe she's part of the cheerleading team. Maybe she's got friends. Maybe your cousin is going to the same coaching class with her, you know what I mean? And so you want yeah. to find a group that he or she, that decision maker who's not responding to you is already engaging with. That could be in the form of just simply following the activity that they have on LinkedIn. I see. So this is good for everybody. When you go to that prospects profile and then, you know, you scroll down about into the middle, there's an activity section it says, you know, let's say like Fred Lee responded to this person, right? And at the bottom, you'll see that section that says, see all activity. Mm. In a real life circumstance, if I went to a networking meeting and met somebody and they're not giving me attention, I don't know, maybe they had a bad day or maybe they know something about me, whatever it is. But in LinkedIn, I can see their entire activity of what they've been doing. So I can see who they're talking to, what kind of content they respond to, all these things. So you can do a little bit of internet stalking to find out the content that they're interested in. For lack of a better way to say it, it really is internet stalking. Who they're interested in, who they respond to, what kind of content is good for them. Do they only respond to videos or do they like more news snippets? Um, who, who is it that they're engaged in? Maybe there's like a key executive of, of peer industry that they keep commenting on because they're good buddies and they actually barbecue on the weekend. Who knows? We don't know. But finding yeah. that surrounding community is very, very key. So we have a couple more questions. I want to uh, ask Ralph Peterson to uh, uh, maybe state his question regarding SSI. Ralph? Yeah, yeah well, so I had, I had two questions. My, so I, I never looked at the SSI before, so thank you for that. That's pretty good. It's an interesting thing. I am a 77 out of 100. So not right. terrible. I'm a little bit behind you. But what I'm really most concerned about, or just curious about is there's two categories that I, I just curious how to get up. So first is the finding right people. I'm mm -hmm. at a 16. Okay. Okay. How does LinkedIn know who I'm trying to find? No, that's a, that's a really good question. So they're not going to spill every piece of the algorithm to us. Right. But when we actually go out and connect with people, and if they respond quickly, that's definitely a gauge that okay. they are that you they are the right people that you are supposed to connect to. Okay. And, and so in the instance that you can only use LinkedIn to say, you know, here's Ralph, here's a center of influence, and through that center of influence, you're trying to reach all the um, people that hang under that center of influence. If, if it's like a two or three layered approach then LinkedIn may be a little bit confused. But in that instance, you want to increase the connectivity with the first person you're trying to connect with, which might be a center of influence of a kind. In that case, then you want to position your profile and such correctly so that LinkedIn knows, oh, I see, this is a person that you want to be connecting with. It may not be the end result of who pays you money, but LinkedIn still wants to see that you have a good connection rate with the people that you're reaching out to. So that would be one thing that I can say to that. You know, that's interesting. I wonder if, I'm causing that number to go down because of how I'm connecting, how I'm trying to connect with people. Possibly. Right. Because I'm, I'm in, I'm trying to, I host a podcast. And so I'm trying to get people to be a guest on the show. And so I'm connecting with a request or information about the show. And so I see. Maybe that's, see. and then the second thing is engaging with insights. I'm at a 14.43. So that's yep. really low. <laughs> it's still better than a lot. 
<laughs> so, right. I'm not much ahead of you. Engaging with insights. So the funny thing about LinkedIn, and this is straight from the LinkedIn office, uh, you know, don't quote me on it, but you know, us who work in this LinkedIn world of things, we all have one or two undercover guys in the LinkedIn offices of things that'll feed us information. And uh, the, one of their kind of hidden goals is really to take more eyeballs off of CNBC and Bloomberg and make LinkedIn the, the primary place through which business information is curated. And so, yes, it's user generated. And so, you know, I hate to use this term, but it's possible, obviously, for like fake news kind of thing to emerge. But at the very least, they want it to be a place where the content can meet the user, which makes the quality of the content higher than, say, Bloomberg or CNBC, because it's always vetted by the audience. Mm -hmm. And so the more themes and more topics and more business insights you're actually engaging with, commenting, responding, all these things, they will rate you higher. And it's just a matter of you getting out there and engaging on that. That's really interesting. Say, we have another uh, question from Wayne Johnson. Wayne? Yeah, I unmuted myself. So um, here's a question I have, and it's kind of uh, the old adage of getting through the gatekeeper back when you were doing phones and email. And my profile, although might be scripted to the decision makers I want to reach, um, those people aren't usually accessible. So I, I have to get to someone else that's more than likely younger and more than likely my profile is not going to match to theirs. So I get omitted from mm -hmm. getting to through the gatekeeper to the person that I ultimately want to get to. So how would you go about trying to manage that kind of two tier step to get to the person I'm trying to get to? Sure. Wayne, let me ask you, uh, the person the first decision maker, if you could reach them directly, that's always best, obviously, but you're telling me that you can't. Uh, Some, is, well, so sometimes you not only can't, sometimes that decision maker really isn't active on LinkedIn, hmm, like okay. everyone else below them would be, right? Makes sense, makes sense. Then in that instance, the highest connection rates, uh, so usually if nobody is doing any work at all in the connection, meaning, hi, Wayne, connect, right? No note or nothing. Hi, you know, I'm as lazy as they come, just connect. Uh, in that instance, then usually what we're seeing today is somewhere between a 15 to 20% connection rate. Um, you know, if you do it at mass scale, okay? Um, now the goal is to raise that 30, 40 and 50 and higher. And the game there now then becomes you actually in the message of the invitation and possibly commenting on some of their posts to actually see you beforehand. Right, because the more say, let's say that Wayne is somebody really important. I need to connect with you at the networking event, but everybody is already on you, and I can never seem to reach you. I've yeah. been there three weekends in a row, and I still can't reach you. That in that instance, I need to somehow find a way for you to see my name, whether it be there or somewhere else, so that when I can actually break through this crowd and say, "Hi, Wayne, my name is Hayato Nakamura," then you're like, "Oh, Hayato, I know you." even though we've never met, right? And the way you can do that is to surround that center of influence or the junior person, like you said, and really um, kind of comment and like and make your name visible to them. So that when you actually go and connect, they're like, oh yeah, I, I seen you Wayne, because on their smartphone, most likely they're gonna get a notification. In their email, they will probably get a notification. Wayne Johnson commented on your, uh, on, on your post. They're seeing your name, seeing your name, seeing your name. Once they see your name more, then your acceptance rate goes up. And then the last thing that I'll say is, Wayne, when you connect with a junior person, if you make it clear that you're not trying to reach them, but the person above them, then they feel used. And nobody wants to have a day on that. And so the more we understand who they are, what they're trying to achieve, and you can align your incentives with that person, then their connection rate goes up. It's increasing touch points and being you know, more serene. I, I understood. Thank you very much. Oh, that's, I appreciate it. That's just such great advice. Um, Hayato, uh, unfortunately, uh, as interesting as this is, we've come to the end of our uh, webinar. I could go on and listen to this forever. And if you're like me, I highly suggest you take uh, Hayato up on his offer to uh, do a week's worth of training for a buck. Um, so that would be really great. I did put that um, link in the chat. So uh, please access it now, click on it uh, before the webinar comes. Uh, uh, comes off the, the air in the next minute. But thank you all so much for coming. Um, and as I say, this does conclude our webinar. Uh, please join us on Wednesday, the 8th of September for our next uh, Pacific Tango Group webinar featuring Yvonne Burton. 
Yvonne will be speaking about tech fluency, a critical element for global business. Um, if you have additional questions for Hayato, or if you're interested in inquiring about his uh, services, um, you know, please uh, make sure that you uh, uh, go to his website, uh, reach out to him on LinkedIn, um, you know, connect with him there. And, um, you know, you can also reach him through Pacific Tango Group. Uh, just uh, send an email to info at pacifictangogroup.com. Um, and if you have any questions for the rest of us and our services, we'd love to uh, hear you uh, and, and uh, answer those questions for you as well. So thank you again so much. And um, we look forward to, uh, to engaging with you in our next webinar. Hayato, thank you so much for your time today. Really wonderful presentation. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.